Hello dear learners today we are going to talk about halothane which is very famously known as fluothane fluothane is a very famous brand of halothane we are going to cover the content in today's video is about halothane the structure of halothane along with the structure its chemical name we are going to see along with chemical name some of the properties such as solubility its appearance odor etc then mechanism of action we are going to talk about and few of the common uses of halothane now coming towards the halothane structure first along with the chemical name you will uh, you can see in this as the structure is really very simple there are two carbons okay. so uh, two carbons uh, first carbon and second carbon on the first carbon all three are fluorines and on the second carbon one is bromine one is chlorine and one is hydrogen so if you will see all the uh, substituents are different one is hydrogen one is chlorine one is bromine one is carbon so this is chiral and this uh, carbon first having all three fluorines then bromine and chlorine so since three fluorines it is also known as or it exist under the brand called as fluothane fluothane so you can relate it with the name that is fluorine since at the first carbon there are three fluorines so it is also known as fluothane then another carbon contains chlorine and bromine so you, you can see the iu pack it is at the second carbon it is bromine and chlorine so it is 2 bromo 2 chloro and 1 1 1 at first position first carbon all three are fluorine so it is 1 1 1 trifluoro and since 2 carbon it is ethane so the chemical name is 2 bromo 2 chloro 1 1 1 trifluoro ethane Uh, coming towards the properties it is colorless heavy liquid and it is having a characteristic odor it is having a pleasant odor because of which the on the virtue of this odor property it is used in the children's uh, by the inhalation route uh, for anesthetization and uh, coming towards the solubility it is soluble in alcohol chloroform as well as ether miscible in chloroform as well as ether and slightly soluble in water now all you all know we are studying this under the chapter called as general anesthetics so its common uses it produces general anesthesia as well as it is having a good recovery and good start induction is also within 2 to 10 minutes and it is more potent so coming towards the next point that is mechanism of action of general anesthetics now all these uh, in classification we have covered in detail all the examples which we are uh, which we are able to see now so amongst these our prime focus is halothane so there are various mechanisms by which halothane acts out of which the major is it acts on gaba a receptor and it acts in coordination with gaba receptors so as you all know gaba receptors are uh, means basically they produce the inhibitory effects through gaba uh, ga gamma amino butyric acid so the inhibitory effect is potentiated by halothane definitely now we want a depression of cns so to produce the depression of cns the inhibitory effect should be potentiated so gaba is all gaba a at gaba a gaba is having already inhibitory uh, effect so it is potentiated by halothane and coming towards the next that is nmda receptor so nmda receptors are inhibited by all these ketamine nitrous oxide xenon so uh, halothane is also having a inhibitory effect now here it was potentiatory since gaba is uh, inhibitory and nmda since the nmda receptors act through uh, glutamate and glycine and the uh, glutamate is the most excitatory neurotransmitter so nmda receptor is having uh, means depolarizing action through the calcium entry as well as the sodium entry through the ion channels so uh, it should not excite 
we want inhibitory effect so it will act as a blocker here and nmda receptors will will be inhibited by inhibiting the nmda receptors glutaminergic uh, transmission will be um, decreased and the excitatory projection will be depressed so it is inhibited nmda receptor then glycine receptor again it is potentiated by halothene Uh, then next is it is also having the effect on neuronal nicotinic receptors as well as 5-HT3 receptors. So the amongst all these, the fo major focus is GABA receptor. So which we are going to talk about now. Various molecular mechanisms, as you can see, uh, no specific receptor till now has been identified on the locus of general anesthetic action. But generally, it acts through variety of molecular mechanisms. The variety of molecular mechanisms, as just now we have seen, they include first GABA, then NMDA, then nicotinic receptors also over there. So, uh, coming towards the GABA, GABA activation, since it is uh, inhibitory, glycine also activation, since it is inhibitory, 5-HT activation, as well as twin pore potassium channels. And... It antagonizes NMDA. That means since NMDA is excitatory, definitely it will antagonize the NMDA. Now, just now we have discussed. Then inhibition at NACH receptor. That is nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. It blocks the excitatory postsynaptic currents of nicotinic receptors as well as voltage-gated sodium channels which are responsible for depolarizing the membrane. Oh, sodium influx, calcium influx, all are responsible for depolarizing the membrane. So, we don't want depolarization to occur. So, they will inhibit. Then, at clinically effective concentrations, general anesthetic increase the sensitivity of GABA. That means, uh, when the therapeutic dose is given, GABA receptors um, means GABA receptors potentiation is seen since they are inhibitory GABA is the inhibitor neurotransmitter which is acting at GABA A receptor and it is responsible for increasing the chloride ion influx so the same way uh, general anesthetic that is halothene will also act it will act in coordination with GABA or it is having activatory effect on the GABA A receptor which will lead to hyperpolarization of the membrane Due to hyperpolarization, excitability will be decreased and inhibitory effect will be achieved. And due to this inhibitory effect, CNS depression can be seen. So, this is the simplest way by which um, the halothene can act. And the prime uh, mechanism amongst all you can call. Now, uh, looking at the structure, that means looking at this image, this is GABA receptor. GABA neurotransmitter, GABA A receptor, uh, binding of GABA will cause the chloride ion channel to open since these chloride ion channels are opening and it will cause the hyperpolarization of the membrane. But when in presence of inhaled anesthetic, what will happen as we have just now discussed, it is uh, potentiatory to GABA. That means it increases the uh, increases. Uh, GABA action so it or it is in coordination with GABA uh, in short you can call so binding of GABA is enhanced when inhaled uh, anesthetics are present so resulting in the greater entry of chloride now you can see here arrow is very narrow and here the broad arrow is there that means increasing the chloride entry and since entry of chloride increases hyperpolarization of the cell will take place or the membrane will take place and it will make more difficulty in depolarizing the membrane therefore reduces the excitability so this this is the simplest way by which inhaled anesthetics act by potentiating the GABA then coming towards the uses of halothene halothene which is commonly known as fluothene is indicated for induction and maintenance of general anesthesia now this is the prime effect which will induce within 2 to 10, 10 minutes the general anesthesia as well as it will maintain along with it, it is having a good recovery. Now, halothene is a prototype. Now, coming towards the prototype, prototype means generally uh, it is the kind of drug uh, which is considered as uh, prototype means uh, it is a what you can say idle drug. Uh, by considering halothene 
all other uh, general anesthetics are derived that means it's a first version a very first version uh, halothen and from which the newer anesthetics are compared or they are developed so halothen is a potent anesthetic we all know that it's a potent anesthetic but it is having a relatively weak analgesia or it is producing relatively weak analgesia so it is weak analgesic as you all know in the definition of uh, general anesthetics or the stages of general anesthesia we have seen first it should produce analgesia then after analgesia excitement stage then surgical anesthesia and paralysis stage so analgesia is also produced but it is uh, relatively weaker analgesic compared to the anesthetic thus it is usually co administered now since it's a weak analgesic and analgesia is the first step of production of anesthesia so it is usually co administered with the nitrous oxide opioids or local anesthetics to first achieve the analgesia and it's a potent bronchodilator also coming towards the next point halothen relaxes both skeletal and uterine muscles now skeletal muscle relaxation as well as uterine muscle relaxation so uterine muscle relaxation uh, again it can be used in obstetric when uterine relaxation is indicated uh, then halothen is not hepatotoxic in children whereas it is um, it's a um, what you can say it's a prominent effect or prominent side effect is hepatotoxicity uh, when it is compared to uh, adults in uh, than the children it is not hepatotoxic in children but it is hepatotoxic in adults when it is oxidatively metabolized in the liver and it produces its toxic forms such as trifluoroethanol and bromide ion which can be hepatic or uh, which can be uh, which can be uh, or which could lead to hepatitis so halothen uh, its um, advantage over children is it is not hepatotoxic at all in the children like it is in adults and when it is combined with its pleasant odor again uh, in properties we discussed it is suitable in pediatrics for inhalation induction and although sevoflurane is now the agent of choice that means uh, since uh, though halothen is a prototype drug because of the uh, few of the concerns side effects uh, the sevoflurane is preferred uh, nowadays which is the agent of choice compared to halothen 